I have read Zero to Sixty. Um, uh, I met Brian a long time ago when he was still working with Rides, yep. and uh, he was talking about this project that he was coming up with, and he told me the name of it, and it sounded cool, and, and then I started seeing it on the stands, and it's it's a really cool book. You know, what you drive is, in a lot of cases, like who you are. In some cases, people think of that when it's, you know, the girlfriend that they have with them is sort of like a representation of themselves, so it's kind of asking, like, who, what you picture yourself, who you picture yourself dating, really. It's a serious question you're asking yeah, it's here. A big, it's a big question. Um, and sometimes you want like a Ferrari, right? Uh, or I was, uh, I kind of equate that to a girl who wears four inch pumps and mini skirt. Um, not to get too graphic, but sometimes, you know, the girl next door is really what you're looking for. That's a 911 turbo. Um, sometimes pickup truck. So I think there's a, uh, I, I think for me, uh, some of the I've been lucky to drive a lot of cool cars. The Zonda is one that sticks out in my mind because it was, um, it's overly aggressive on the outside, but driving it's actually like luxurious, which you wouldn't. It was surprising, but but I like cars that are multi-talented. Yeah, still you, Jim. That's my Scottish accent. Um, I've got an M3 that is uh, my kind of road trip car. Which, uh, on a BMW M3. Oh, it's an E46. Yep. Which is, I, I like them. I, I even like it better, I think, than the newer ones. Um, um, I've got an old Porsche 76 um, 912E, which is possibly the slowest Porsche ever built. Um, my dad bought it new in the dealership, and it was the car that I grew up thinking was a supercar. So I eventually bought it off of him. I've got a uh, Toyota Tundra supercharged one for the beach. I just bought a Ford uh, F350 Dually. Uh, with this insane 6.7 liter diesel that can tow like a building um, and so and that's what's in there but I, I, I I'm not somebody who I, I don't really have race cars for the street I'm lucky I get to vent on the racetrack with other people's cars that's the business plan is other people's cars um, but uh, but I do like to I, I do enjoy all those cars I got a call from Ken to do the second one um, at Irwindale, and I think it'd be awesome. I think it'd be great to have both of the Fiestas out there, because um, his his Gymkhana Fiesta is prepared differently than the Rallycross Fiestas, right. and so it would be it'd be really interesting to kind of see the difference between the two. I know he's got a bit more power, and and but I think we could we could match up with that, and um, so I'd love to go out there and, and check that out. I love the whole mirrored course concept. Um, uh, I went with Ken to the first, there was a Gymkhana event uh, maybe five, six years ago that this guy T Ken Takahashi put on at Irwindale and um, took Dent Ken to that event. I was going there and and, uh, uh, and that was I think his, f when he first saw this kind of Gymkhana thing and it's so cool to see that he's taken it because it was sort of a small event there and, and it wasn't too well were you there did you go to that no I didn't go to that. it wasn't too well like put together and to then put you know Ken Block style on it which is you know kind of over the top yeah. and uh, I think it's gonna be really cool so I'd like to be there um, you mean the driving driving the whole production no I think, I think, you know, Ken started a shoe company in his garage, and I don't know if there's too many people that could do that. And he's also started this Gymkhana craze from just wanting to go beat on a car on an open field and, and justify it by having somebody videotape it. I, I think he has more fun, um, I think he's about the driving and the fun for doing it, but then the videos have done so well, now it's kind of like we have to keep the, the, the game rolling. But it's... Um, no, I, I don't think I could. I don't think I could market this and do this as well as he has. It's that's his genius, and that's that's uh, why he is who he is. I think sexual relations anytime is awesome. Sting, I think, is the only one who believes in abstaining. Everybody else is lying. Um, I think the people that don't know about the British show, the 99.9% .9 of the states that isn't uh, you know watching that show um, will be pleasantly surprised by this format it's a format that works it works around the world it's it's interesting hopefully 
and um, it's certainly fun to make the shows and that comes off on screen and the production value is unbelievable the stuff that I've seen that that uh, you know it's all produced by BBC America um, here and the stuff that I've seen is it's just epic the production value I've never seen a car show I don't think any of us have ever seen a car show in the States with that kind of production value all of our car shows are um, you know uh, like pinks and and you know things like that and and um, test drive and supercars and and you put the resources that come behind Top Gear and it just makes for beautiful stuff on screen. So I think yeah, you'll you'll get a totally different uh, totally different show. Um, we just got back from this trip in Alaska. I don't know how much I can talk about it specifically, but. It was nuts. I mean, it was like five days of camping out in trucks. And I mean, we drove hundreds of miles into the wilderness. And, um, you know, it, it was, I mean, it's like the, it's the real deal. It's not, uh, it's not like, like what you would typically see, you know, you watch uh, some, a show where maybe somebody's doing something like even Survivor Man, who knows, he may be staying at the Ritz Carlton every night. I don't know, but <laughs> you know, I hope not. Um, but I can say with Top Gear, it's like the real deal. We are out there in the middle of it, and the producers are camping out. Everybody's camping out, and they're, it's, uh, I've never been involved in a production like that, so it's really cool. Um, I'll admit I'm delivery, but it's not because I'm lazy. It's just because phone is closer. Um, phew, uh, it's... Uh, Rear wheel drive is, uh, boy, what kind of question is that? This weekend, all wheel drive. Next weekend, rear wheel drive. It changes. I love turbocharged engines. Um, so I'm going to have to go turbo on that. But for road racing, for racing, naturally aspirated is, is more fun. With turbocharged engines, you, uh, you're starting like a chain reaction every time you hit the gas. And so you're not precise at how much acceleration you get. It just sort of builds. You start it with your foot, and then it takes off on its own. With the naturally aspirated, you can monitor exactly how much weight moves to the back tires, and uh, so you can be a lot more balanced on a road course. I mean, I don't want to like uh, categorize myself, but I like small turbos. I like response from small turbos, and I like reliability. And I think a lower compression with a turbo is, is always a good idea. Running high compression is cool, but you just don't get the mileage out of it. And with the Fiesta engine, it's unbelievable what Olsbergs has done with it. I mean, we're running two liters, we're running almost 60 pounds of boost, four bar. And um, I don't know what the compression is on the engine, but it's probably not that low. Yeah. And it's uh, 285 horsepower per liter. It's epic. I like manual gearbox unless I'm in town or on the racetrack. Um, in town and on the racetrack, you know, a, a great, you know, the new dual clutch systems. Like I drove the Porsche PDK system the other day. Wow. Yeah. You know, the, some of these systems are so unbelievable. But there's nothing like using a clutch pedal and, and, and rowing through gears. That's, that's why we're driving enthusiasts is because we did that when we were you know, young and, and got addicted. Uh, I don't have pickup lines. I'm not, I'm not good with pick. Um, in that accent? Yeah. Uh, I've always liked the one where you knee, knee, a, knee a girl and say, I need you. <laughs> I think that's, that's awful. <laughs>